Now we're going to show how to connect this one. This is the wall adapter and the wall adapter will be also connected to the same, the same terminals from the breakout board. There are two ways to make this work. You can either plug this part of the adapter into the wall or you can wire these two prongs to the neutral and live positions on the power supply. I'm going to show you both. <clears throat> when we're done with that, we're going to take off the end and we're going to strip these two wires apart and then wire this one to the breakout board. So the one of the options was to connect the the actual the leads here from the plug to these terminals. I'm going to be using one of these um, connectors, which actually slides right on here. It's a tough, uh, it's a very tight fit, so it needs some elbow grease to get it on there. And I'll be just using some simple wire um, from the connector to the terminals. And I'll also be using some heat shrink. So uh, this can be protected from um, any accidental touching. I'm going to be removing the plastic um, protective covering from these connectors and I'm doing this just because it's a lot easier to crimp the wire into the into the connector Okay, take off enough insulation that you'll be able to take the stranded wire and then loop it around like this. We've taken off the, um, the insulator so we can put this in. Sometimes it's easier just to get it into the crimper first. and then insert the wire. And crimp. Sometimes I go over it with this piece as well. <clears throat> that should be pretty tight. Yep. Do the same thing to the next one. Even though this type of plug, you can put it in backwards on a, on a standard plug, there's no um, change in width in the neutral and um, load side. But I'm going to try to keep consistent with the, the standard um, load and, uh, and neutral. So I'll be, this is the neutral side. So I'm going to be putting the, the white wire on that side and then the, on the load side I'm going to put the uh, black wire. helps to use needle nose pliers to get these on because they're rather difficult or regular pliers will also work and add the heat shrink so you create a protective barrier since this is mains voltage Okay. 
um, shrink the heat shrink. You really only need to get it on well enough so it doesn't slide off. And this looks like it's pretty good. Still, it's advisable not to put your hands anywhere near this area just because there is a live voltage here and that should be protected or covered in some way. Another good way to do it is to use silicone and just put silicone in this area. So this won't will be out of um, out of touch. All right, now I'm going to take the white wire. I'm going to put it on this terminal. Have an ample amount of wire out so you can twist it around the existing wire. really tight and it won't come out. Now also, of course, as I said before, the other alternative is to just plug this into the wall. Uh, but this allows me to only have to use one plug for the entire CNC. So this um, helps quite a bit since I will also need some plugs for the, um, the computer and the router. So um, from here, we take the wire that comes off of the uh, plug and you're going to snip off the end. You probably don't need as much wire as this, but I like to to have it just in case I need it. And then I'm just going to separate it. Pull it apart. And we will test which one is positive and which one is negative. So I have this plugged in. And I'm going to test my line, my DC voltage, keeping my hand away from this area because it's live right now. Now I'm going to test these leads. I just took off the insulation and I'm going to test these leads to determine the, the positive and negative side. So I can see that this is the positive side, the one with the stripe on it, or the, the um, dashed stripe on it is the positive side. 